Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. The house is a fucking mess, but my wife is out of the house, so I'm gonna use this opportunity for filming. Um, it still does not feel normal to me to talk to a camera in the presence of another person unless they are directly involved. So I use the time wisely when I've got nothing to do. So today I have come to you with um, the book recommendations tag, which I don't think I was directly tagged by anyone. How rude. No, very possibly I was, but it's at my fault that I don't keep up with those things. Um, where did I write all my answers down? In here. My little notebook with um, animals on it. My dog is eating his own foot. Delicious. I wrote my answers down in here. Please excuse, this is a really intense background. It's a lot, there's a lot going on here. Okay, so these are some books that I would recommend to you for various reasons. Question number one, a book that you'll, that you tell people is your favorite. Um, I wrote Outline by Rachel Cusk because it is truly the book that comes to my head when someone asks me what my favorite book is, um, or my favorite book. Um, that's the, that's the easy, fast answer, so I'm going to go with that. I was trying to be quite intuitive. Question number two, a book that is your guilty pleasure. I don't really believe in guilty pleasures. Um, I have a, f but if I have to answer that, um, I don't think, to be honest, I don't think any type of reading should be a guilty pleasure because I can think of things that you should be way more guilty about doing than reading a book. That doesn't matter what the fuck the book is. So I don't feel guilty about any kind of reading. Um, but if I had to kind of find an answer, and I do want to answer all of these, then two things come to my head. One is like, um, erotica, because people just feel that that's taboo in general, and I really like reading. You just literally bumped into me. Sorry for the large animal that is, um, backing into me. Um, yeah, it's taboo to talk about sex. Um, or to read kind of like smut. Um, and I do really like reading erotic, erotica. So that can be like, um, Leste, which is an erotic fanzine, fanzine? Zine, an erotic zine, um, that I actually spoke about on Instagram the other day on my stories. Uh, they're no longer publishing new issues, but you can get them, like their catalog or their backlog online. Um, so that, which is like a little bit of erotic poetry, erotic photography, um, erotic fiction, interviews about sex culture, um, and Anais Nin, I really like to read her erotica, so that's guilty in the sense that, like, people don't speak about it so much. Um, and the other one would be, like, crime fiction? <laughs> because I feel like it's less what my corner of booktube like uh, dissects or talks about, but I love me like a thick ton of French crime book. Number three, a book that, what did, I, what did I write here? Oh, that everyone loved, but you didn't. So I wrote Sally Rooney and I wrote My Brilliant Friend. Um, <laughs> Sally Rooney, I got few sentences into conversations with friends and I was like, no, few pages. I did give it few pages and I was like, oh, absolutely not. That's not for me. And actually, I really love Elena Fronte, but I didn't finish My Brilliant Friend because I thought it was exhausting um, and a little bit boring to me. Uncomfortable about saying that. Um, I do feel like I should give that another try, but I didn't love it enough to finish it. All of you can um, tell me to fuck off. If you're sensitive to language, don't watch this because I just had a glass of wine. Number four, a book that you read the fastest. So I put 
both of the books that I've read from the Living Autobiography series of Deborah Levy, so the first one being Things I Don't Want to Know, and the second one being Cost of Living. Cost of Living, I read in one sitting at the beach in Biarritz in France, um, and it was perfect. Both of those books, I just... I... Her uh, trilogy, I haven't read Real Estate. I have it up there on my shelf. Um, is just like my cup of tea my glass of wine my glass of rosé for me that was like i ate it up i read it so fast and also transit by rachel cusk i also read really fast that's what comes to my mind a book that deserves more hype i okay i have two answers one is any book by Josephine Hart. Last year, my favorite book of the year was The Stillest Day by Josephine Hart, which is somewhere up here, but I don't know where it is. But this is a tricky one because I think that most of her books are out of print. So how can like something gain more hype if people can't get it? Um, and I made the mistake of making one of her novels like a book club pick. Um, for my book club, which I run on Patreon, and it was really difficult for, like, most people to find a copy. So I do wish that she got more hype because I think she's an author that, like, falls into the arena of, like, the kind of writing that I know a lot of people on here would really love. They just don't know about her. And I just found her by accident in a used bookstore, which is probably the only way that you would come in contact with her books now, which is unfortunate. They should maybe be republished. Who should I speak to about that? And the other one who is an author that you can read is Siri Hustvedt. Um, Hustvedt. I read her book, The Summer Without Men, and I loved it so much. And she is very popular and people read her books, but I do think that we can talk more about her because I think just from that one book that I've read, super fascinating really i think we should all like want to be siri who's fed completists um and we're not talking enough about her i think those are the things that come to my head although like siri who's fed is very red so she uh, maybe she gets enough hype number six a book that is becoming a movie or a tv show and oh eileen by Otessa Moshfag, I read recently. I know most people have already read that a long time ago, but I read it this year and loved it and read it with a few friends and my partner and everyone loved it. And I know that that is becoming a movie with Anne Hathaway. So that should be super interesting. I do really recommend Eileen. I think that that is a super um, character driven, very immersive, like, it's the kind of book that will, like, take you in a chokehold and not let you go until it finishes. And then you're going to think about it more after. And it's, like, a really good conversation starter. Um, like, a really good book club pick, I think. Number seven, a book you've reread the most. I don't re do rereads um, because I feel like my journey with reading only started, like, a few years ago. when Basically, when I started this channel. Um... So I just feel like I have so many books to get to um, before I'm doing any rereading. The book that comes to my head is also another answer. So maybe actually this one I will leave, um, leave unanswered. A book from a genre you don't typically read. Um, I wrote Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. All of these books are probably going to be not surprises for anyone that watches this channel um i've said before that i think jeff vandermeer's annihilation is a perfect novel like five stars just perfection as a novel um and that's sci-fi and i don't normally read science fiction like i can i have not read a single other book um, that would be considered sci-fi I read the first few pages of The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula Le Guin, and it was probably one of the strongest opening paragraphs I've ever read, so I should maybe give that a, um, a further chance. But, um, and I'm, now I'm thinking about 
other sci-fi books that I should read, like The Employees by Olga Ravin. But yeah, I, um, oh, maybe I have read more sci-fi now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, Jeff Vandermeer, Annihilation. If you don't read sci-fi, it doesn't matter. You should read that book. So smart. So smart, so captivating, so freaky, so interesting. Uh, number nine, a book that deserves all the hype that it gets. I wrote The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I know that not everyone loves that book, but it does have like a really big cult following. Like it is the ultimate dark academia read. And I read it last year um, and loved it. Like it was a good time. I was sucked in. I had a full like cliche, amazing reading experience like you imagine it with reading that book. Um, and I was quarantined in France in a shitty hotel room without any windows. And I read, I read it there as well and on buses and on planes and it just sucked me in. Um, so that was, I would say like the secret history. I think that like it does deserve the hype that it gets. Um, it's just a really good book. Like it's a book you lose yourself in and has some really fucked up characters that are super like fun to watch um, self-destruct. Number 10, usually a book that I usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. I'm gonna say the same outline by Rachel Cusk. Um, of course it depends on who the person is that is asking me for the recommendation because not all books are fit for every person. Um, and, and maybe this is kind of one of those questions where it wants me to choose a book that's like, that would be generally appreciated by many people. Um, but I don't think that that's an easy thing to come up with because reading is very particular. Um, when you give a book to someone as a gift, you have to be very comfortable with them either hating it or just not reading it for 20 years. Um, and that's fine. So I don't know. Yeah, but when I'm normally asked to give a recommendation, I think about the person that I'm speaking to and what they normally read or, or just like what they are interested in in life. Um, what's the energy that the person gives me? How do they speak? What do they think about? But, um, but Outline by Rachel Cusk for most people that I, that ask me, this is what I say. If I think that it fits them, I would say that first. Book that has your favorite character. I wrote, um, Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. The main character is Garion, this like red winged creature um, from the Hercules myth. And this goes again with the book that you've reread the most. That's the only book that I've read twice, I think. Um, and it was amazing both times. And I love that little red winged monster dragon character I want to adopt him. I want, yeah, he's just the sweetest, really the sweetest, sweetest little gay monster. So for me, it's scary on. Number 12, a book you wish you could live in. <laughs> I wrote Slow Days Fast Company by Eve Babbitts because I just finished it recently. And I mean, there's a lot of things in there that are like super sad, harsh, like it's all about actually what's very dark and sad under the artifice of Hollywood. Um, but still, I would like to live in a lot of the situations that she talks about. Like when she talks about driving in a convertible, you know, down to Laguna Beach, um, or doing like some trip in Joshua Tree. Um, like I would like to live in that. Maybe not doing all the drugs and all that stuff that's also in that book. Um, but that was the first thing. Like who doesn't want to live in like 
cool girl glam California. Actually, I'm sure a lot of people are not interested in that, but uh, that's what comes to my head. Number 13, book you thought you'd hate but ended up loving. That's hard because if I think I'm gonna hate a book, I don't read it. There's way too many books to read that I think I will really like. If I don't think I'm gonna like a book, I probably don't read it, so I don't really know what to answer for this question. Because I don't, I mean, I am very influenced by what other people are reading. Like, it's not that, like, if everybody and their mom is reading this book that, like, I won't read it. I mean, even if that book feels like it's not going to be my cup of tea, I am influenced to read things that other people are reading. But, but not enough to, like, read something that I thought that I would hate just to see if I would like it. Like, I don't have time for that kind of thing. Number 14, a uh, book that made you cry. I have two and they were recent and one of them I made a vlog on called This Book Made Me Cry for 10 Minutes Straight, uh, which was Welcome to America by Linda Bostrom Knausgaard. Woo, that book broke me. It's about this little girl. It's from her perspective and her. she wishes one night um, to God that her father would die. And then he does die and she thinks it's her fault. So she renders herself mute and she decides that she will not speak um, because she's scared of the power of her voice. And it's just, wow, so beautiful, so so micro that book is like a micro look at a micro life in a character and it was just heartbreaking i really cried a lot after that book finished and the other recent read um was is mother dead by vigdis hjorth and that book also broke me um yeah I, I finished it on the train home to venice or something like that and I would have ugly cried in public if I didn't feel like I was surrounded by people on the train. I just, I felt like I was holding it back, but that, that book really, really made me super emotional. Um, especially the ending, which are in fact both Scandinavian authors. Um, yeah. That's just interesting. Last question, number 15. Book you wish you could read for the first time? I really want to choose a book that I haven't yet spoken about because my easy answer is again, Outline by Rachel Cusk and I keep like beating that over the head. So that's my answer. But I would also say like maybe a book by Patti Smith, like the first book I read by Patti Smith was Devotion, and it really impacted me. It really planted her in my life as a really influential artist and voice and poet and um, now online digital creator because she has like a sub stack and uh, she's making videos. So I wish I could encounter her voice again um, because of how much I felt it changed me. Um, maybe as well, Joan Didion. When Joan Didion passed away, I cried a lot, which was so interesting because I don't know her, I never met her, other than meeting her via her work, which is in a very deep way, meeting someone. But I don't know, I didn't know her personally, obviously. And it really, really broke me when she passed. Um, and I remember making a little video when I was dancing, kind of like dedicated to her, which for some reason I felt compelled to do. Um, so maybe as well, like a book of hers. I wanted to make that concise, but it's been 24, 25 minutes now. Gotten to the last sip. Thank you for joining and listening and taking my book recommendations. I wish sometimes with these list type videos that I could branch out from 
books that I talk about a lot already, but I couldn't. These are really the books that I anyway kind of recommend throughout my journey on booktube, so I hope that this was still interesting because I'm sure you already heard about these books from me. Okay, I'm gonna go take a bath and um, probably listen to more Melissa Broder because I've been having a fucked up week. Really, really fucked up week for so many reasons. And she is just bringing me a lot of joy and laughter, which is really important. And Ohad and I decided that we are gonna listen to together the audiobook for the Pisces. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Goodbye from my little pup. And me and my messy house. What books would you recommend? Please write them in the comments if you want. Okay. Bye.